Today we continue in our summary of the historic books and we're looking today at 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, and 1st and 2nd Chronicles. And of course in the Hebrew Bible, not our English Bible, but the Hebrew text of the Bible, the 1st and 2nd comprise one book and not two as we have them in our renderings. We want to go to our Heavenly Father in prayer and ask His blessing upon all that we do. And though we do not always say it and though we do not always practice it, we know that we must and should emphasize prayer. And so we do. And this is the reason we spend the time. Because we need to start right and begin right. And an important part of that is always prayer. So let's go to our Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, how interesting, how insightful is your information into the lives and the characters of the people in your Word. And you do not paint them as men might and only emphasize the good parts of them. But you paint lives as they are and as they need to be revealed for your purposes and your wishes. And Father, we do see both good and bad in, in the Scripture. We see men as they are, sometimes doing your will and sometimes living in the flesh. And we see the accounts of evil men and we see the information and we wonder and what an interesting thing it is from an a interest of history and an interest of literature and an interest of of people to look into this portion of your word of the word of God and see the lives of these people and the accounts that are given. We're just giving a brief summary of that, but as we do detailed studies in our private study and of uh, the word of God, help us as we study this portion of the word of God, we pray. And we thank you for it, and we ask your blessing upon the discussion of the material and the outlining, really the summarization, the categorizing of the events of these books today. And may you be pleased to uh, use this information in our lives to understand the new and to uh, give character studies into things and principles that we need to practice and do. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Of course, we have left the era of Joshua and the judges, which Ruth is also included in. And we get to the era of the kings. And, of course, God wanted to rule his people in a theocratic way uh, through his divine presence, but they wanted to be like everybody else around them. And so they became demanding that a king be provided to them. And, of course, Samuel warned them about this. But they insisted, and so we have the background before the kings in First and Second Samuel and the beginning of the age of the kings of Israel and their reign. And of course God permitted this for his purposes, but he told them that because of it, they'd have a lot of problems in their lives. And so we, uh, we see this account today. First and Second Samuel deal with this great prophet and he was also a priest this life of one Samuel who dominated the history of Israel during his period and of course we know about his birth and about his mother's dedication of him when he was just a child and how God spoke to him and from a child he had the wisdom and working of the Lord in his life and so we see about Samuel's life and of course we learn about Eli who was his mentor, as it were, the, the priest that ruled in, in Samuel's historic time life and in whom he came to serve with, and how that Eli, though he loved the Lord, uh, he let his sons do wicked things, and he didn't raise his children the way he ought to, and he caused great harm and, and caused a prophecy about the uh, glory of the Lord departing from his family because of his his uh, failure to cause his children to walk in the way of truth. And so we see the life of Samuel and the life of Eli. 
We haven't discussed the life of Saul very much. He was the people's choice to be king. And of course, we do not know for sure where Saul was saved or not. We know that the Holy Spirit came and went on him as he did most of the people in the Old Testament. <clears throat> there is some indication that God gave him a new heart and that he really was saved. We do not know that for sure. But we see the life of this King Saul and we see his, his uh, desire for uh, continuance and his personal agenda that he put ahead of God's agenda, how he feared the people. He wasn't all bad, but he wasn't all good either and much was incomplete and a failure. He had these uh, fits of demon oppression, of course, which David's music helped him in when David first came into contact with Saul. And then we have, of course, the account of Saul and David and how Saul would try to kill David upon occasion and then would see the folly and repent of that. But we have this sordid, complex uh, life of the life of Saul. And of course that's a, a, a portion that's very interesting that you can read about in the Word of God. A lot of information about that. And then of course the high point of the kings we have in the life of David. And this is in First uh, and Second Samuel. And David follows Saul of course. And David is the, the man that followed God primarily in his life. Though he did see it upon a couple of occasions in, in different ways. And because of his sin with Bathsheba, sin was in his family situation so that David's family and his children had many problems because of his sin. But David was a great king and the premier king of the kings of Israel. And David's life and all the events of it, and we just touched a couple of them, but there are many great studies and many great lessons. And of course he wrote a large part of the book of Psalms, which is my absolute favorite of the books of the Old Testament, personally. There is so much spiritual worship and benefit and truth in the book of Psalms. And David, that great singer of praises of the Lord, wrote many of them under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And so we see the life of David in First and Second Samuel and in First and Second Kings, we see Solomon, his son, in his reign, in his life. And, and uh, then at the end of 2 Kings, we have, of course, Solomon's sin and the prophecy about the division between Israel and Judah. And, of course, people who haven't studied the Old Testament in detail get mixed up about this, and so we need to have a clear understanding of this in our minds, how that... Rehoboam, Solomon's son, wouldn't listen to the wise counselors, but he, he wanted to even rule with a stricter, more heavy hand than his father, and the people couldn't bear all that giving of material and taxes and, and, and tribute anymore, and how there was rebellion, and how that the northern uh, confederacy uh, was broken off from the southern one. And there was never a king in the northern confederacy that, that knew and walked after the ways of the Lord. And some of the ones in the south were and some of them weren't. But even the ones that were, their lives were not complete and, and, and totally well pleasing to the Lord. And so there was judgment of sin in almost every period. Though like in Josiah's time there was great revival at times under some of these good kings. And so we have Rehoboam and Jeroboam and the dividing of the kingdom. And in your Schofield Bible, your, my new Schofield Bible, at page 408, we have a listing of these kings. And of course, some lists are different according to the authors. But if you can get a good list like this list, you can get a lot of information about the kings. And of course, some give God's decrees as to whether they pleased him or not in the listings of them and so you can get a lot of source material and there are a lot of notes and source materials in any study Bible in any place you study that will be of great help to you and so we just point out that in our summary of, of these historic books today. We have of course after Jeroboam and Rehoboam we have the, the beginning of the ministry of Elijah and how he dominated in the scene and of course his 
association with Ahab and Jezebel and their conflicts and the great test on the mountain of God and the great victory and the great deliverance. This mighty prophet who did so many great miracles, Elijah. And then in 2 Kings, you have the, uh, the life of Elisha who did more miracles. He asked for a double portion and, and we have his life and his miracles. And towards the end of 2 Kings, of course, we have the life of Hezekiah. And we have the Assyrians dominating the situation in Israel and causing the, the, the great enemies and how that some of their armies were destroyed during this time period by God in miraculous ways. And the life of King Hezekiah. Of course, towards the end of 2 Kings, we have this Babylonian Assyrian leader who became uh, the world power through Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. And we have the fact that he came and overran Jerusalem and the captivity began at the end of 2 Kings. Now, First and Second Chronicles are the covering of some of the material in First and Second Kings. They're only, uh, some of it is viewed in a different way. And we have the priest view in, in First and Second Chronicles. And this was the records that they kept and dominated in where uh, maybe the records in First and Second Kings were from a historical person's viewpoint. We do not know who the author was of either First and Second Samuel or First and Second Kings or First and Second Chronicles. But we know that the information was uh, collected from different source materials as we have said. And some of the uh, events in First and Second Chronicles we have explained in detail that we do not have explained in First and Second Kings. And so we read these books and we see the history of men. We have seen how the historic book starts with Joshua and then there were the 12 judges. During that period, Ruth uh, book was written. And then we see the beginning of Samuel and then the kings of Israel, starting with Saul and then David and Solomon, the two great kings of Israel, and then lesser kings. Some of the kings of Judah were good and bad, and uh, all the ones of the northern uh, confederacy were bad. And of course, different uh, nations came and took the different, uh, the northern, I think, went into captivity at a different time than the southern. And they were taken to captivity by different circumstances and different nations. And of course, Nebuchadnezzar overran Jerusalem and the, the uh, Southern Confederacy, which is the one that most completely did the work of God, was taken into captivity into Babylon. And so we finish this portion of Scripture that's referred to as the historic books today and ask God's blessing and His help upon it for your life. Amen.